Fasten your seatbelt. It's mayhem! Three, two, one! Go, go, go! Hey everybody, welcome to Play, Rank, Share, the show where I play the marquee PlayStation 5 titles, create an ever-evolving ranking of the best PlayStation 5 games, and share my opinions with you. My name is Tyrus, and this episode is focused on Destruction All-Stars. Developed by Lucid Games and released under the PlayStation Studios banner, Destruction All-Stars is a PlayStation 5 exclusive game that launched free with PlayStation Plus on February 2nd. Initially slated as a launch game, I was very intrigued as to why PlayStation decided to delay this game for a few months and move it from a $70 title to a free game. This strange decision led me to believe that Destruction All-Stars simply wasn't up to standards that Sony expects from PlayStation Studios games, and they were trying to move it away from a very crowded launch lineup. After spending all of launch day playing Destruction All-Stars, I think it is a fun game that nails the Destruction Derby style gameplay. In pre-release trailers, the game emphasizes the importance of being both in the vehicle and on foot to win matches. Both feel good to control, driving the cars are smooth as I easily chart my course, while running around on foot made me feel agile. I definitely enjoyed being in the car more, while there is some use to running around the map as your character, I don't think it largely helped me win or gain points in comparison to being in the car. The bulk of your time in Destruction All-Stars will be spent in the four different online game modes. Mayhem is similar to a traditional deathmatch, you participate with up to 15 other players and score points based on how hard you hit your opponents. Lightly tapping their car gets you 1 point while wrecking the car nets 5. This was the game mode I ended up spending the most time with. While the rules are the simplest, I enjoy going through and trying to win or set a new personal best score. Gridfall is similar to a battle royale style match, where you are attempting to wreck other players as the stadium slowly collapses around you. I think this mode has a lot of potential, but the problem I found is that once you get down to a couple players, it's easy to avoid your opponent and run out the clock and earn a draw. This has already happened a few times in matches I have played, but this mode is fun at the beginning when it's 16 cars driving around the small map trying to survive. Tornado is another interesting mode where you collect gears from smashing into your opponents, obtaining an exponential amount as you are more successful. However, you need to deposit these gears into a tornado in the middle of the map in order to successfully earn points for your team. If your car is wrecked before running through the tornado, you will lose all of the gears you have built up, creating an interesting risk reward system. My issue with Carnado is that every match I've played so far has been very lopsided, regardless of if I won or lost. I think by about the halfway point in the match, it's really easy to tell if your team is going to lose or win. Finally, Stockpile is very similar to Capture the Flag, where there are three bases around the map that you want your team to control. I think it's hard to set up a sound strategy in this mode, however, as driving a car makes it hard to guard one of the bases, and you'll be playing with strangers that aren't keen on communicating. Out of the four modes, I found Mayhem to be my favorite. Even though it's just a traditional deathmatch free-for-all, I found it the most fun because it was the most simple. The Mayhem mode allowed me to focus on the core gameplay Destruction All-Stars, and that's where I think this game shines the best. When playing these online matches, you have a choice of 16 different playable characters. I like the design of these characters, it represents a diverse cast, and each character has their own personality molded through their design. Characters are unique in gameplay with each having a special car with a game-changing ability and a personal power-up that can be executed on foot. These abilities and power-ups can range from invisibility, leaving a trail of fire behind you, and being able to instantly wreck a car for a couple seconds if you hit them head-on. While this doesn't make characters play significantly different from each other, it does make you want to go through and try all 16 characters to see which one fits your personal playstyle the best. There is also a small single-player mode that you can play. There is one for each of the characters, but this mode is minimal. There are 7 challenges for each character, and you even have to unlock this mode using in-game currency, although the first time through is free. The currency can either be earned through completing online challenges or by purchasing with microtransactions. The game currently doesn't even offer the challenges, so time will tell how egregious it is to lock the single player content behind this method. In general, I don't think Lucid Games has much to gain by this decision, and would rather that all of the short stories are instantly unlocked. I do enjoy the visual aesthetic of Destruction All-Stars. At first I was not a fan, thinking it looked like a Fortnite clone. However, throughout my time playing the game, I think it matched the overall vibe of the game well. The graphics aren't super stunning, but I do think they look nice. It utilizes a bright color palette well, and has particle effects from crashes that look really impressive and stand out as the one thing that I think couldn't happen on a PS4. Additionally, the degradation of the cars as you take on more damage is expertly done. The cars become harder to control, and you lose top speed if you lose a wheel from a big hit. Additionally, the adaptive trigger kits in when something is wrong with the car, 
giving you significant resistance as you try to earn more points from your destroyed vehicle. When playing through the different modes, I couldn't help but notice how awful the in-game commentary was. It was very common to hear the same line being repeated five or even six times in a single match. The commentary also does little to lift you up as a player, the bulk of it focuses on how you are not in first place. During one match I was in second place for most of the match and the commentary still made quips about how poorly I was doing. Additionally there is no in-game music during these matches. I think music would have helped with the atmosphere of the game, similar to how Splatoon's multiplayer was. Instead, the lack of music makes the game feel a little bit empty. Changes to these presentation components of the game could improve the user experience in the long run. I think there is a lot of potential in Destruction All-Stars. The game is good in regards to the most essential parts. The graphics are pretty, the cars control well, and it's fun to repeatedly crash your car into your opponents. Developer Lucid Games have already committed to a year of updates adding new characters, arenas, and game modes. However, the game in its current state is pretty bare bones, and I do not really enjoy any of the game modes besides Mayhem. After one day of playing it, I feel like I've experienced most of what the game has to offer, and from now on, I think I'll regulate it to be in a game I play while listening to podcasts until the next big content drop is released. I do recommend trying the game out while it's free on PlayStation Plus, because the core gameplay is really fun and you'll then have the game for free when it gets big content drops down the line. Overall, I think Destruction All-Stars is a pretty good game and I give it a score of 6.5 out of 10. While I'm enjoying Destruction All-Stars, I do think I'm going to have to rank this towards the bottom of my PlayStation 5 game list. Other games were patched with more content or contained more polish, leaving Destruction All-Stars to potentially be lost in the shuffle here in the early stages of the rankings. I'm currently ranking Destruction All-Stars number 8 on my list of best PlayStation 5 games. I'll keep my eye on Destruction All-Stars as content drops occur throughout the next year. This is the first primarily multiplayer game I've played so far on the PS5, and I'm aware that as it evolves over time, it might need a new ranking. I'm rooting for Lucid Games to take what they have so far and turn it into a more fleshed out game. Thank you for watching this episode of Play, Rank, Share. Make sure to subscribe and ring the bell to be notified when future episodes are released. The next review will hopefully be on Assassin's Creed Valhalla if I can ever manage to finish this campaign. If you want to see gameplay of Destruction All-Stars, make sure to check out our early impressions on our show, The Gamer Seat. What are your thoughts on Destruction All-Stars? Let me know in the comments below. And until next time, don't stop sharing.